Hey guys, I'm playing a three minute game. Couldn't find anyone in the five minute pool. Check. At least it was taking a while, so let's play a faster game. It's good to do this from time to time. Keep myself sharp. Maybe someday I'll, I'll solve this time pressure problem. Uh, let's take with the knight. Let's go queen c2. Rook e1. Someday I might achieve... Ooh, can I do that? You should go e5. e5 would be a good reply. Because if he takes, I can play knight d4. Now if I take here, he takes on d5. Ooh, but... But, 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 that, that could get interesting. Okay, I'm going to do this, because if he has knight, if he plays knight takes d5, I think I can go queen e4. Does that work? I think it does. And his knight is pinned. Take that bishop behind it. This might be a quickie. I don't see how he avoids material loss. Yeah, and he resigned. All right. Check. So this was, uh, I, I don't know what the name of this opening is. <laughs> Bishop b4 check on move two. If someone knows it, please let me know, because uh, I should look it up or something. But it transposed into like a Bogo Indian, or it could have if he had played knight f6. He plays f5, which is... Not a bad idea, a bad idea at all. Then he gets his pawn in front of his knight that eventually lands on f6. So this idea that I executed with uh, d5, this is very common to Nimzo positions or um, Bogo positions, Queen's Indian. I guess not Bogo so much, but Queen's Indian and Nimzo, where you go d5 and if they take it, then you go knight d4 and you unleash this bishop. And you destabilize this square, f5, so that pawn's undefended. And white gets a lot of dynamic play. So I think he should actually ignore that move and maybe just continue with his development, knight bd7. Or perhaps even play g6, although that seems kind of weird. But let's say knight bd7. I guess I could still play knight d4, though. But oftentimes I know the best thing to do is keep the pawn here. This, this might not be one of those cases, though. Knight c5, I can go b4, let's say. This pawn might just fall. Huh. So let's just see how he should respond to d5. Engine just says take it. Take knight d4. It gives edge to white. Well, maybe not. Small edge to white. Maybe anything other than taking is bad for him. Yeah, looks like I can play queen takes f5. It's okay. I thought briefly that he might do that, but knight g5 seems sufficient. And then his knight is stuck because I'm threatening mate. If he takes it, or moves it away. So that seems good. e3, knight to e4. Okay. Yeah, I would play this for white. All right. Nice to get a miniature. And he just resigned here. Very nice to get a miniature. Oh, that's funny. So the engine gives a line, knight b4, queen takes b7, knight 8c6, if he had played on. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't thought about this. And then the point is my queen is trapped. Yeah, I don't have a, a good route to get out. And he's threatening to put a rook on b8 and win the queen. But apparently I can play a3 and then f say rook a b8, sack the queen. Say so he takes, I don't know which way he would take, and then take here. And I have two miners and a rook for the queen. So that's why it's showing such a favorable evaluation. But uh, I'm certain in an over-the-board game, should black be unlucky enough to get into this position, they probably would have found something like that. Knight b4. That's a nice hidden resource. Even in positions where you think you're just dead winning, chess sometimes surprises you. So yeah, knight... Knight eight to c6, and he can trap my queen. But a3 is still good. Hmm. Okay. Well, that was a quick one to start the day. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'll be back with some more five-minute videos later today. 
All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.